Thanks so much for coming out this morning. I want to be true to my Scots heritage. I never turned down whiskey. Uh, I'm David McGrew. I'm going to be presenting uh, some joint work I did with Andrew Chi and Brandon Enright here. And um, the, we're going to be assessing the security of certificates at scale. And the exciting thing, of course, is we're going to show an exploit against keys we got off the internet. So for the last decade or so, people have been aware that there's a problem that commercial and small business and consumer grade devices often have really poor entropy and when they use this to generate keys, they can generate keys that are exploitably weak. And so Dan Bernstein and Nadia Henninger and their teams, you know, convincingly showed this a long time ago and there's, there's other teams that more recently showed that it's still a problem. In 2023, we are talking about migrating to quantum safe cryptography we have a, another problem to solve, which is this weak entropy problem, right? Because otherwise we're going to have quantum safe algorithms with weak keys, which is maybe an oxymoron. So what is the, the weak key problem? So here we've got a big set of devices. And in this diagram, there are wireless access points, right? Could it be, but it could be any device that generates uh, a public private key pair. And so each device has an entropy source in it and the entropy source is going to provide an output into a key generator. Very often these devices generate a key when they first boot, which is often a problem because if you have a software-based entropy source, when you first boot, you probably don't have a lot of entropy. Probably it's a fairly deterministic process by which you boot. And so the, if you use that entropy, put it into a key generator and generate a key from it, then uh, that could potentially be a problem as we show. But our model is, you know, we've got a lot of devices, they each have an entropy source, they each generate uh, a public-private key pair. And then we, we're able to access the public keys and then analyze them. So if you have cryptographically strong entropy generators, then if you want to generate an n-bit key, all two to the n possible keys are equally probable, right? And that's what you want to be unpredictable to your adversary. But with weak key generation, you just have a really small typical set that's like a tiny fraction of the original size of, you know, the, the size you wanted, right? And this can make it predictable. And so we're going to be detecting and exploiting some of these weak keys. Going back to our original picture, we have a bunch of wireless access points and they're, they're, they're entropy sources, except device one and device three happen to have entropy that's similar, right? And so the similar entropy is fed into the uh, key generation algorithm and then the, the keys are going to be weak, right? So red on these diagrams indicates weak. And, the, you know, there's a key thing here is, which is there's a lot of devices that we want to assess the security of and we're going to use batch processing on this. And it actually is kind of a birthday paradox thing. The more things were analyzing the more chance of success we're going to have. So there are different public key crypto algorithms and they each have their own failure modes and the, the two really important ones are common keys and common factors. So common keys can be generated uh, for any algorithm, right? It, it just means that the, the, the entropy input to the key generation was identical in two cases so you get identical keys out, right? So this, this can happen for any algorithm, elliptic curve cryptography, RSA, or any of the quantum safe things. And so detection is fairly easy in the sense that you're just doing an equality match, but it also is difficult to go from that match to strong evidence of um, failure, right, of exploitable weakness because there are, you know, the same public key might be enrolled in multiple certificates and sometimes people actually take the same private key and they put it in multiple servers and they think they're being clever even though it's a poor security practice. And, but the common keys can be generated by weak entropy but it can be difficult to distinguish it from that like poor security practice. The other thing that we're going to focus more of our time on today is common factors, right? So in the RSA crypto system, there are two factors. I'll show you how the math works. And it can happen that uh, two distinct private keys have the same common factor, 
We can detect that using the batch GCD algorithm, and this is very strong evidence of uh, a weak entropy and a serious problem with the entropy in the system, and then also it's exploitable, which is kind of fun to watch. So here's how the RSA crypto system works, right? The public key is the product of two large primes, and those large primes are the private key, right? So the private key would be, you know, P comma Q, and then the public key is their product, M. And M is also called the modulus, right? Within the context of RSA. So multiplication is easy to do in a computational sense, but factoring is very hard, right? So which is what makes the RSA crypto system secure when it's done properly. So when I talk about uh, common factors, what I mean is like two distinct devices will generate the uh, identical factors, right? You can see here, you know, continuing our previous example, device one and device three have the, their Q factor in common, right? They happen to be equal because the entropy input was so similar. So we can find common factors, right? So in this situation where device one and device three happen to, you know, have this weak entropy problem, we can just perform the greatest common divisor algorithm and use that to find Q, and then we can divide M by Q and we can find the other factor and then we've broken the, the key. So the GCD algorithm is easy, it's not hard in a cryptographic sense, and there's this, this algorithm that Dan Bernstein came up with for doing batch GCD, right? So you can get a very large set of keys and find any common factors that those keys might have, right? Which is the real key to efficiency in this situation. To actually use this approach, the, your first step is you need to obtain certificates, right, that have RSA public keys in them. And so you could obtain these through active scans of the internet or through passive monitoring that, you know, for TLS 1.2 and earlier, you can just observe the certificates on the wire. And then if you have a friend that works at a certificate authority, then you can get the CA logs, right? And that's another really good thing. And um, so we have some tools that we published, TLS scanner for active scanning, Mercury for passive monitoring, and cert analyze for analyzing standalone certificates, as well as the batch GCD program, which isn't written on this slide, but these are all BSD licensed um, Linux oriented tools uh, implemented in C++ 17 with a lot of, <laughs> with native ASN1 code. And so the TLS scanner tool can, you know, scan a, a list of hosts you provide in a, in a file and it can write out the certificates as a, a PEM file. And so you can use this to obtain certificates from a set of hosts. So if you have like a, a set of hosts, like say you're, you want to do a security audit for some, you know, bunch of stuff on the internet that you're, you've deployed or, you know, somebody you've, who's contracting with you has deployed, you can use this to grab all those certificates. So our certificate tool, you can use this to filter uh, against a regular expression or an exact string match in the text fields of a certificate, which is really useful. If you have a giant batch of certificates, like you got it from Shodan or Census or someplace like that, Rapid7, then you, you can use it to filter out things like there's a particular vendor you want to focus on for a security audit. Uh, filtering the giant set of certificates down to a very large but manageable set of certificates can really help you uh, by, you know, making the analysis go faster. So our tool can, if you're going to filter, you need to provide the PEM output format and it, you know, outputs the manageably small set of certificates. So in, in, in our work, so we, we wrote these tools so that we could assess certificates at, um, you know, that, that we were, uh, you know, for devices that we were analyzing and we applied this to a, a number of things, including internet scan data, and we found there's a lot of common strings in issuers that reveal uh, different vendor names, right? So today we're going to be picking on Draytech, and we kind of picked them at random. 
Um, but just to admit, right, so my employer is Cisco and, and Cisco small business routers did appear here and uh, you know, fortunately we no longer sell that thing. So the batch GCD tool is where the, most of the interesting work gets done for RSA. So in this tool, um, which, you know, I have to give credit to Brandon and Andrew are the, the people that wrote this. I only wrote the ASN1 export functionality. Uh, batch GCD, you provide it some giant set of certificates in a single file that has the, the PEM certificate format. And, and then you have to provide it with the right keys option if you actually want it to generate some output data that you could use to demonstrate an exploit. So for each factored RSA key, it is going to write out the private key in a separate RSA private key format. It's another PEM format. And the, it's also going to write out the corresponding certificate, right? So if you're analyzing, you know, millions of certificates, you don't want to have to wade through that file in order to, to find the certificate file corresponding to your private key file. This tool does two passes over the input data because we want to carefully manage our random access memory usage because RAM is a, is a scarce resource when you're trying to do something like batch GCD. So I want to show a demonstration of this attack and l let me explain the setup here. Right, so we have uh, a victim that owns uh, a wireless access point that has an exploitable key in it and he has chosen to trust the self-signed certificate associated with this device. And the victim is at a browser and he's going to visit the manufacturer of this device and we're going to perform a machine in the middle attack against uh, his traffic. So I want to acknowledge the MITM proxy tool which we used in this attack. Okay, so we're going to start out. This is the attacker's machine. So we've previously obtained a bunch of certificates that are all have this, you know, Draytech string in their issuer. And we're going to run the batch DCD program with that file as input and we're going to ask it to write out the private keys. And you can see we've got about 158,000 distinct uh, RSA keys here. A modul modulus is a key in this situation. And so I, I wish I had the laptop here today. This is running on my framework laptop, which has eight cores. And you can see in the system utilization, we're keeping all of the eight cores pretty busy at this point. And so uh, this tool can analyze a batch of about 67 million RSA keys altogether. That's assuming an average size of um, 2048 bits each, which is commonplace. And that's going to require about half a terabyte of RAM if you actually go up to that limit. Uh, you can rent that on GCP for not too much money. So th at this point it's a boring demo, but we're about to get to the point where we find 55 weak keys out of uh, the initial set, right? So our tool writes out the, the lines corresponding to all of those uh, weak keys and we're going to pick one of these things at random to use in a, in a demo. The tool outputs, you'll see the line number is the, you know, the, the number of the certificate in the input file and we have to use the line number so you can correspond the, uh, the private key file with the certificate file and that's the sort of thing you use here we're piping the certificate through uh, our tool so you can see that the subject alt name in the certificate includes www.draytech.com. And this is a terrible idea to do, right? To, to say that the subject alt name for this device is on the, um, here I'm showing that we are substituting the, Here, I want to replay that. I think I have time to do this. Sorry, my explanation's a little slow. So you can see we're, we're going to replace words like manage, management, VPN with the word hacked, 
right? That's what MIT M proxy is going to do for us. So we're running MIT M proxy here. And so this victim is visiting Draytech.com. And first he's going to bring up his favorite search engine, DuckDuckGo, and look up Draytech. And then we're going to visit it. This is the victim's view at this point. And so, you know, we'll visit Draytech and, and we're surprised to see that uh, our man in the middle proxy is working and the, we are intercepting the traffic and uh, replacing uh, <laughs> the, you know, we're, we're, we're revealing hacked routers and uh, hacked switches and whatnot, right? So, um, so don't ever put the, uh, uh, your, your vendor URI in the uh, subject alt name if you're going to have a cheap device generate the certificate. That's one of the things that you shouldn't do. The other thing you shouldn't do is have weak entropy, right? So uh, hopefully that attack made sense. And I want to uh, conclude the presentation with uh, a few thoughts here. Batch testing is practical and effective. And, you know, Dan Bernstein and Nadia Henninger showed that this stuff was a problem 10 years ago, but we wanted to democratize this a little bit by making a, a, a full set of tools available. And we found in, in our work that showing somebody an exploit is, uh, you know, often necessary to get them to understand that, yes, an exploit is possible. So for future work, you know, we'd like to detect more uh, failure modes. There's you know, the, the two major ones we found now, but there's other failure modes, um, weak keys, especially with um, RSA. And uh, we're working on analyzing a large batch of manufacturing certificates, and we hope to share that information soon when we can. And I want to mention that you can download uh, the, the software tools and documentation. So on github.com slash Cisco slash Mercury, Please look in the, the in the documentation directory for the batch GCD file, which has the the instructions about the the main tool here. And you know, if I could, you know, make a shout out for people who like to do crypto attacks. As the industry evolves away from RSA towards uh, other crypto algorithms. It's going to make it harder to detect weak entropy problems, but it is not going to make the weak entropy problem go away, right? So this is a very real thing, right? We should be looking for other ways that we can convict devices that have weak entropy. So that concludes our presentation for today. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>